Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And I'm going to start with something that I'm sure every single one of you will be well aware with. Obviously, Burnley played Cadiz in a friendly over in Spain yesterday and the game finished 1-1. Obviously, it was streamed both on Clarets Plus and the Cadiz YouTube channel. But yeah, so I'm sure every single one of you is aware of it. I'm sure every single one of you will have seen the, the articles and the pictures that the, put, uh, the club put on the website because obviously the last few friendlies have been a whole big secret. But this one, obviously, it was streamed live and, and the club have done interviews and pictures and articles surrounding it. So we, we, we managed to get to see this one. But yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was good to finally watch Burnley again. I know a lot of people are saying like, why do you bo why do you bother about friendlies? You're just training exercises. It's not something that fans should be interested in. I want to watch Burnley at the end of the day. And if I don't understand why I'm being ridiculed for wanting to watch Burnley. But anyway, it was good to finally watch the Clarets. Um, I'm not going to obviously talk about the game overly too much because it was just a friendly and there's obviously you could see there was some sort of like fitness, not match, not fitness, but sort of like match sharpness issues. Obviously, they're playing out in the heat as well. Um, so there was a couple of misplaced passes in the first half. I remember thinking some of these passes are going astray a little bit. Um, but people were overreacting on social media saying this is not good enough and stuff. I mean, come on, lads. This is why the club are being secret about it because of these sort of reactions. But uh, yeah, second half, much better. We scored a brilliant goal. If you haven't seen it, I would put it on here, but I think YouTube algorithm might pick it up as something um, that has rights on it when it doesn't because it's a friendly. Uh, it, I mean, it could be the intellectual property of Cadiz, I suppose, but I won't put it on here just in case if you do want to see the goal. And it's a great goal from Lyle Foster, by the way. It can be found on the club's social media channels and even Turfcast as well. Um, Turfcast Twitter and Turfcast Facebook. You can catch it on there. Great goal from Lyle. I thought it was pretty quiet in the first half, if I'm honest with you. Um, again, the teething issues that I spoke about, we had all these players um, sort of like kind of just getting in each other's way up front a, a little bit and, and all these misplaced passes. But the second half, these these four up front, they actually started to to gel a little bit more and, and Corley Orshaw was fantastic. He looked sharp as well. I think Corley Orshaw was the standout for me. I expected him to maybe be a little bit laggy with how long he spent out, but he's absolutely rapid. And obviously, speaking about the Spanish commentator, you just kept hearing him say rapido when he was talking about Corley Orshaw. So, yeah. Yeah, I was impressed with how sharp Corley Osho was. I mean, we know he's got bags of quality, right? We know he's really, really good. But I expected him to, to you know, maybe be you know a little bit leggy and stuff like that. But he wasn't. He was fantastic. He had a great hand in the goal as well. A fantastic turn of pace to beat his man, which then in turn created the chance where Lyle Foster pinged into the top bin from around twenty five yards. So yeah, some some good good signs in the friendly. I know Cadiz aren't you know the most decorated side in in, in history of Spain or, or or far from it. But it was interesting to see. The Burnley lads link up pretty well in the second half. And I'll tell you something else. After the match, there were pictures circulating on social media of, of Scott Parker meeting the fans and some of the players, chatting to some of the fans as well. So it was really, really good to see. It's not something we've seen probably for, for quite a while, you know, the fans and the players mingling like that. So it, it is good to see. And hopefully it's a sign that, you know, the the playing staff and the management staff and the fans can can kind of have a close relationship because I felt like that was kind of missing a little bit last year. I mean, obviously the results don't help with stuff like that, so we are going to need good results if that's going to be the case. But yeah, interesting. But uh, definitely good signs in the friendly as Burnley draw 1-1 with Cadiz in Spain. Looking at the transfer sort of activity or the reports of transfer activity, obviously I should say there was a report yesterday. I actually saw it again from a smaller sort of account on Twitter actually looked at it this time, learnt my lessons from last week, then I noticed that Liquip have picked it up again, and I always say Liquip can be a bit hit and miss, but then it started spiralling and, uh, and some of the other reports started picking it up, but Burnley are about to bring in, it sounds like it's re re really, really, really close, uh, goalkeeper Etienne Green, who plays for St Etienne, who, who play in green, that's actually quite funny, um, but the report was saying that he flew to England at the weekend to finalise the deal. And uh, I've been speaking to a couple of people, as I sometimes do or try to. I've always said, throw it straight to the bottom of the barrel, so take it with the biggest pinch of salt if you if you want to. But I believe that the medical is, is taking place or has taken place today on Monday. So Etienne Green, according to a couple of sources on Twitter and according to somebody that I spoke to myself, 
is very, very, very close, and it's looking like he's going to be coming in. Now, it's interesting because he's got a name like Etienne, and he plays in France, but he's actually... Uh, declared to play for England, or, or he played for England under twenty ones. Um, if I'm, if, uh, if if memory serves me, I'll just quickly get it up on my screen now. But I think he played for England under twenty ones. Yep, former international England under twenty ones. Two caps for England under twenty ones. I saw an article yesterday. This might be the wrong way around. That he has. Um, an English mother and a French father, or it could be the other way around. And he, but he was born in France, but he's, he, he's, he's declared to play. Oh, no, he was born in England, so he was born in Colchester, according to this. But he has dual citizenship. His current market value, according to this, is around 700k. He was one point rated at around 10 million euros, uh, according to this. So he's, if those of you that play football manager will be more aware of him, um, he was a wonder kid on, on the game a few years ago. I believe he's had a few injuries recently. And that's kind of why he's, he's, he's sort of stalled and he's not really been given the chance to, or, sh or should I say, not re not really had the chance to kick on uh, due, due to his injuries. But according to just looking at some of his stats now, uh, he's played 23 times in League 1. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's still quite inexperienced, but I would suspect that this guy is coming in to be the number three goalkeeper. But, yeah, according to several reports on Twitter and according to a couple of conversations I've had, this is very, very, very close. So, who knows? We could see an announcement in... What, next couple of days? Elsewhere, from an incoming to a potential outgoing, and again, it's not one that too many fans will, will, will lose too much sleep over, but a few fans will think that he hasn't really been given that much of a chance under previous management, but it looks like Darko Cherlinov could once again be out the door at Burnley Football Club. Obviously, he spent last season on loan at Schalke, so he, he never really got the chance, well, he didn't get the chance to play in the Premier League, obviously. Uh, but according to a report from what I believe is a Polish journalist, he's got a lot of followers on, on Twitter, um, he's called, I'm not even, you know what, I'm not even going to try, he's at, on Twitter, he's at W-L-O-D-A-R-85, and his first name is Thomas or Thomas, as I presume they pronounce it over there. Um, but he says in his report that Darko Cherlinov from Burnley may soon join and then a Polish team. Um, Jagiola Bialstock. Jagiola Bialstock. Something like that, anyway. Um, the 24 year old winger has an agreement with the Polish champions, but negotiations between the clubs are still ongoing. It's about renting, whatever that means. It can't be about renting property, surely, um, unless the, the term renting in this case means um, a loan. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. And then he goes on to say, obviously, that Cherlinov spent last season on loan at Schalke. Now, like I said, I, I quite liked Darko when we was in the championship, but he was always picking up little niggles and he was always never really, you know, in the team and and he, and, he, and he'd come off the bench and do quite well in some games, but then would be a little bit anonymous in other. I always described him as kind of like a, a rough diamond. Like I, I felt that he clearly had something there about him, but he was never really showing it too much. There was a conflicting report though out there from Will Lancaster. I think I've mentioned Will on the show before, but for those who don't know, he's a local lad, um, but he does do stuff as a freelancer for quite a few different newspapers around the country. He says, however, that understand Darko Sherlinov will hold a meeting with Burnley on Monday to determine his future at Turf Moor, with him having trained with the first team in pre-season. He believes that reports touting Sherlinov with the Polish champions are wide of the mark at this stage. Uh, the term wire of the mark always reminds me, and I love Chris Borden, not for one second giving Chris Borden grief. Um, the, the term wire of the mark always reminds me that that time when we, we were signing Joey Barton and everyone were going, oh, Joey Barton, Joey Barton. And then uh, Chris Borden tweeted, I believe that the reports linking us to Joey Barton are wide of the mark at this stage. And I think we signed him like later that day. It was quite funny. I like Chris and I tried to get him on the pod a couple. I say tried, the conversations were had to get him on the pod um, a few times, but it just never really materialised. Uh, elsewhere, there's a couple of rumours again going out about Vegos, which I'm not going to do its own single thing on because these reports are coming from random Turkish accounts that have no following, no substance or anything. But some of them are saying that Trabzonspor have now signed Vart Vegos. Um, he's still on his holidays and his holiday will finish this week um, when, when he will go to Turkey uh, to finalise the deal. So, Interesting with that one. And obviously, there's been some chat, and this has mainly been instigated from another Burnley page, about Sander Burge obviously not being in the team yesterday. 
Um, there were some reports that he wasn't in the team. I'd say reports, some rumours that he wasn't in the team um, due to injury. Um, and then uh, uh, it's, it's just all a bit of a mess at the minute with Sander, this, this Sander thing. There was reports uh, that, he, that he missed the, the 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 game yesterday and everyone was saying, oh, it's because of injury. And then again, there's the, the Burnley page. I think it was the Burnley way. I think it's either the Burnley way or, or Claret's, uh, I can't remember. I think it was the Burnley way. Um, but then they've said today that he's injured. So it's interesting. I haven't heard anything myself about that. So um, I can't confirm or deny either way. But I'm sure I'll be able to tell you whether or not he's injured tomorrow. And hopefully we get some more news on it as well. But yeah, that's it from me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. It was great to see the lads yesterday. Absolutely fantastic. It's got my appetite wet for the season now. Etienne Green and Darko Cherlinov, two guys that, you know, they've... I say, I say, I've never even seen Etienne Green play, but two guys that you would presume, well, Dargo hasn't ripped up any trees at Burnley, and I would presume Etienne Green's coming in as a number three goalkeeper. I still stand by the fact that I think Haladki will be number two, although some decent little passes yesterday um, I, I, I felt from him while he's still getting used to his new team, um, but I still think we'll look at somebody else to bring in as number one, but hopefully we get that done soon, because if not, and, and, and we don't want him to be number one, um, then it's going to be interesting. Um, to see who how we set up on uh, Monday against Luton Town. So yeah, looking forward to that one. The season starts in exactly a week today. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching and thanks everyone for listening. If you're listening on the podcast and I will see you next time.